Hey guys, what is up? This is Mr. Crayfish, and welcome back to another modding tutorial. So I'm sure all of you guys are keen to get back into this. It's been over a week, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm in year 12 at the moment, so it's hard to find time um, to actually get these tutorials done. These don't, like, before I actually record these, I kind of test all the code just to make sure it works. Um, because I don't want to be like mid through the video, this doesn't work, and be like awkward. So I make sure I test everything before I teach you guys. So in this episode today, we're going to be looking at item properties. Now I looked at block properties, and I thought it would be it would be fair, um, well not really, it would, it would be right to do look at item properties, not just block item properties as well. So we're going to get into that today. So I've created a simple item cheese stick. So if we go back to my main mod class here, I'm just going to close off these uh, other ones that I got open. Um, I've just created a simple item cheese stick here, created a new class. And what I've done is I've made it extend item here. So I created that, I've just set on unlocalized name. Um, I've set the texture name to a blaze rod. Um, just because I didn't, I couldn't be stuffed making a texture, and I've just set the creative tab uh, down here. We just register, oh no, down here reg registering it, and I've also added a crafting recipe for it. So, just thought I'd mention that before we start. All right, so we're gonna get straight into this now. The first uh, property that we're gonna go over is dot set full 3D. And if we put that in, semicolon at the end like that, what this will do is it will render the item like you're holding a sword. So um, I'll show you right now. So what I'll do is I will I'll leave that on actually. We'll run the game. And if we get out our item, uh, our cheese stick here, um, and we go into F5, you'll see that it's sticking out like a sword. Now if we actually took that off, it's going to render, say if we held something like this, so it's going to render... Um, just like that, and I'll show you right now if I go ahead and take that off. So you will just comment that out by putting two forward slashes in front of it. And you can see how much different it renders now. It just renders like an item, not a sword. Now I'm going to keep that on because I think um, it looks cooler when it's sticking out like that. It's like a big cheese stick. Now the next property that we're going to do is we're going to type in this dot set no repair. Now it's going to be a bit hard to show um, what this actually does, but uh, actually we can show it, we can show it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my item cheese axe over here and I'm going to put that in there and um, what this will do is if we run the game is it will stop the item from being repaired. So you see here we've got a damaged um, cheese pickaxe because we can see the durability. What we'll do is, is um, we'll get out an axe as well let me get rid of this stuff. Uh, we'll get out another pickaxe and another axe. We're just going to game mode S right now. Game mode S. And we'll hit some... Oh no, actually we'll just destroy the ground. It'll be quicker. That'll be quicker. Uh, now we need a crafting bench, damn it. Actually, no we don't. <laughs> We're in a... We can go into our menu here. So what this will do is it will stop the item item from being combined practically. So um, with the pickaxe here, as you can see, we can actually combine it. But if we actually put um, these two axes together that somehow are in my inventory, you can see that it doesn't actually combine. And basically what set no repair um, basically just disables that. So we can repair this, but we can't repair these two axes. So that's what set no repair does. Now I'm going to get rid of that because I do want them repairable. The next property that we can set is the container item and this is basically the item that is returned when you craft or smelt something. So you know when you put a bucket, um, let's say a bucket of, um, what's a crafting recipe that uses? Um, I think it's um, a, a, a cake. You actually use a bucket of water I oh, know you use a bucket of milk in it. Um, when you actually craft that cake, the bucket is left over. So this is basically how you can set the item that gets returned when you actually craft it. So if you say set container item, and then inside of here we go and put in, um, we have to put in an item variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to call our main mod class, so tutorial mod, and then we can get an instance of our items here. 
So I'm going to make this item cheese stick return a bit of item cheese when it is actually crafted. And I'm just going to um, import that. Now this 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 works for both um, smelting and crafting. So if you put that in, it's going to work for both of them. And now we're just going to show an example. Uh, we will put um, actually we'll create a smelting here. So just under the one that I've already got, we'll do add smelting, um, and then we'll just put in item cheese stick. So just you can just I usually like to use the keys. Um, to um, go through the options here. I'm not sure if you can see me doing it, but you just highlight over them, press enter, and it automatically does it for you. So the item, we need a new item stack for the output. And inside of that, we're going to put, um, we'll make it do something random, blocks. Dot, um, let's do blocks. Dot bedrock. <laughs> I know that's so stupid, but oh well. Now it's going to put 5.0f in there. I don't really care too much. Import that blocks if it's not imported. And also again you can just use com control shift O to automatically import instead of highlighting over it. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the game and I'll show you um, how this set container item actually works. So we're going to put this crut we're going to put this item cheese stick inside the furnace here. Now uh, what you're going to have to do is um, you're going to have to set the max stack size to 1. Now, I'll get to that in a minute. But if we put that in the furnace like so. So, so I've discovered this only works for the crafting recipe. I thought it would work for the furnace, but unfortunately not. So, if we go ahead and take our cheese stick, I've created a simple recipe, which um, a 2x2 two two cheese stick creates a piece of cheese. So, what we've set the container item of these cheese sticks to um, this actually this cheese here so we should get four back from that plus we'll get one from here so if you click on this now you see that we got four back and then we got that extra one from crafting it so there we go we've got five pieces of cheese hey bedrock okay so I discovered why it wasn't actually um, returning the item in the furnace and it actually requires a more of a complicated method to actually return the item and we're probably going to go over it in a future tutorial so if you did want to return your item um, from a furnace smelting um, it will be done in a future tutorial so don't worry about that. Now the next property that we're going to do is the max stack size and this basically um, actually not that set max stack size and it's this method here and basically this just sets the, how big the stack can be so um, I wouldn't recommend that you do anything over si the default 64. So if you want your item to only stack up to 8, you put 8 in there. And if we go ahead, actually I'm going to get rid of this container item because I don't want that in there. And then I'm also just going to clean up some code that I was just testing. Um, yeah, we don't need, don't need that anymore. And we'll run the game. And if we get out our item now you'll see that we can only stack it up to 8. So that's how you set the max stack size. Now remember, again, uh, I don't recommend you do anything over the, the default 64 because I think it might break a lot of things in the game. I mean, it would still work, but um, it would just make... Yeah, it's just going to go funny for if you had it in like a... Um, if you had it in a furnace and stuff like that, it's just going to go funny. So um, I don't recommend that you go over 64. Now there's two more properties that might be useful. So the first one is set max damage. So this is basically how much damage the item has. Now um, this is not going to be entirely useful yet, but in the future if we actually create something that um, takes damage from the item, um, we can set the max damage here and then that will take the damage. So if we took a damage from, say, we put it inside of a machine that takes one damage off it, um, it will change that. It will change the damage to 999 because we set our max damage to 1000, so it would remove one damage. But um, it's not going to be useful right now, and I can't really show you what it does. Um, and then maybe the last one is set potion effect. Now it's not entirely crazy. I think 
this still works. So if we type in potion helper, and then we've got this list here of potion effects that we can do. So we got blaze powder effect. We'll just do that. Semicolon at the end. Import this by pressing Control Shift O. Then press save. We'll run the game. I'm not sure if this will work. Um, <laughs> we're just gonna see. Okay, so it seems to be working. We put our cheese stick inside of the brewing stand here, and it seems to be uh, brewing into something magnificent. I wonder what it's gonna be. Probably nothing. It's gonna be a mundane, mundane potion, I reckon. Told ya. No effects. I love it when it's got no effects. Mmm, yeah. Ah, oh, it's perfect. Oh, I'm so powerful now. <laughs> but yeah, um, you can set the potion effects on there, and that could be useful if you want to make um, potion link potions a lot simpler. You could just create your own items. Um, set the potion effects to the real ones in the actual game here. So we've got, obviously, the nether wart, which if you combine that, that's basically the base of a potion, you could set that to this here. So if we did that, we would just change this potion helper here to, um, where is it? Do, 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 do. Somewhere here. It might be one of these. Um, sometimes they're not deobfuscated. But anyway, um, you can set potion effects in there. Not really anything. It's not something that I would use, but if you do want to, you can use it. Uh, so that basically brings us to the end of this tutorial today. Uh, there's just some basic properties that you can set. The rest um, were kind of useless. I only went over ones that might be useful. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Remember to hit a like. The next tutorial will be coming out soon, so make sure you stick around for that. And I will see you guys later. Bye!